Proverbs 26. It is totally out of place to promote and honor a fool, just like it's out of place to have snow in the summer and rain at harvest time. An undeserved curse will be powerless to harm you. It may flutter over you like a bird, but it will find no place to land. Guide a horse with a whip, direct a donkey with a bridle, and lead a rebellious fool with a beating on his backside. Don't respond to the words of a fool with more foolish words, or you'll become as foolish as he is. Yet if you're asked a silly question, answer it with words of wisdom, so the fool doesn't think he's so clever. If you choose a fool to represent you, you're asking for trouble. It will be as bad for you as cutting off your own feet. You can never trust the words of a fool, just like a crippled man can't trust his legs to support him. Give honor to a fool and watch it backfire, like a stone tied to a slingshot. The statements of a fool will hurt others, like a thorn bush brandished by a drunk. Like a reckless archer shooting arrows at random is the impatient employer who hires just any fool who comes along. Someone's going to get hurt. Fools are famous for repeating their errors, like dogs are known to return to their vomit. There's only one thing worse than a fool, and that's the smug, conceited man always in love with his own opinions. The lazy loafer says, I can't go out and look for a job. There may be a lion out there roaming wild in the streets. As a door is hinged to the wall, so the lazy man keeps turning over, hinged to his bed. There are some people so lazy they won't even work to feed themselves. A self-righteous person is convinced he's smarter than seven wise counselors who tell him the truth. It's better to grab a mad dog by its ears than to meddle and interfere in a quarrel that's none of your business. The one who is caught lying to his friend and says, I didn't mean it, I was only joking, can be compared to a madman randomly shooting off deadly weapons. It takes fuel to have a fire. A fire dies out when you run out of fuel. So quarrels disappear when the gossip ends. Add fuel to the fire and the blaze goes on. So add an argumentative man to the mix and you'll keep strife alive. Gossip is so delicious and how we love to swallow it. For slander is easily absorbed into our innermost being. Smooth talk can hide a corrupt heart, just like a pretty glaze covers a cheap clay pot. Kind words can be a cover to conceal hatred of others for hypocrisy loves to hide behind flattery. So don't be drawn in by the hypocrite, for his gracious speech is a charade, nothing but a masquerade, covering his hatred and evil on parade. Don't worry, he can't keep the mask on for long. One day his hypocrisy will be exposed before all the world. Go ahead, set a trap for others, and then watch it as it snaps back on you. Start a landslide and you'll be the one who gets crushed. Hatred is the root of slander, and insecurity, the root of flattery. Proverbs 27. Never brag about the plans you have for tomorrow, for you don't have a clue what tomorrow may bring to you. Let someone else honor you for your accomplishments, for self-praise is never appropriate. It's easier to carry a heavy boulder and a ton of sand than to be provoked by a fool and have to carry that burden. The rage and anger of others can be overwhelming, but it's nothing compared to jealousy's fire. It's better to be corrected openly if it stems from hidden love. You can trust a friend who wounds you with his honesty, but your enemy's pretended flattery comes from insincerity. When your soul is full, you turn down even the sweetest honey, but when your soul is starving, every bitter thing becomes sweet. Like a bird that has fallen from its nest is the one who is dislodged from his home. Sweet friendships refresh the soul and awaken our hearts with joy. For good friends are like the anointing oil that yields the fragrant incense of God's presence. So never give up on a friend or abandon a friend of your father. For in the day of your brokenness, you won't have to run to a relative for help. A friend nearby is better than a relative far away. My son, when you walk in wisdom, my heart is filled with gladness, for the way you live is proof that I've not taught you in vain. A wise, shrewd person discerns the danger ahead and prepares himself, but the naive simpleton never looks ahead and suffers the consequences. 
co-sign for one you barely know and you will pay a great price. Anyone stupid enough to guarantee the loan of another deserves to have his property seized in payment. Do you think you're blessing your neighbors when you sing at the top of your lungs early in the morning? Don't be fooled. They'll curse you for doing it. An endless drip, drip, drip from a leaky faucet and the words of a cranky, nagging wife have the same effect. Can you stop the north wind from blowing or grasp a handful of oil? That's easier than to stop her from complaining. It takes a grinding wheel to sharpen a blade, and so a friendly argument can sharpen a man. Tend an orchard, and you'll have fruit to eat. Serve the master's interests, and you'll receive honor that's sweet. Just as no two faces are exactly alike, so every heart is different. Hell and destruction are never filled, and so the desires of men's hearts are insatiable. Fire is the way to test the purity of silver and gold, but the character of man is tested by giving him a measure of fame. You can beat a fool half to death and still never beat the foolishness out of him. A shepherd should pay close attention to the faces of his flock and hold close to his heart the condition of those he cares for. A man's strength, power, and riches will one day fade away, not even nations endure forever. Take care of your responsibilities and be diligent in your business and you will have more than enough, an abundance of food, clothing, and plenty for your household. Proverbs 28. Guilty criminals experience paranoia even though no one threatens them. But the innocent lovers of God, because of righteousness, will have the boldness of a young, ferocious lion. A rebellious nation is thrown into chaos, but leaders anointed with wisdom will restore law and order. When a pauper oppresses the destitute, it's like a flash flood that sweeps away their last hope. Those who turn their backs on what they know is right will no longer be able to tell right from wrong. But those who love the truth strengthen their souls. Justice never makes sense to men devoted to darkness, but those tenderly devoted to the Lord can understand justice perfectly. It's more respectable to be poor and pure than rich and perverse. To be obedient to what you've been taught proves you're an honorable child, but to socialize with the lawless brings shame to your parents. Go ahead and get rich on the backs of the poor, but all the wealth you gather will one day be given to those who are kind to the needy. If you close your heart and refuse to listen to God's instruction, even your prayer will be despised. Those who tempt the lovers of God with an evil scheme will fall into their own trap, but the innocent who resist temptation will experience reward. The wealthy, in their conceit, presume to be wise, but a poor person with discernment can see right through them. The triumphant joy of God's lovers releases great glory, but when the wicked rise to power, everyone goes into hiding. If you cover up your sin, you'll never do it well. But if you confess your sins and forsake them, you will be kissed by mercy. Guard your life carefully and be tender to God, and you will experience his blessings. But the stubborn, unyielding heart will experience even greater evil. Ruthless rulers can only be compared to raging lions and roaming bears. Abusive leaders fail to employ wisdom, but leaders who despise corruption will enjoy a long and full life. A murderer's conscience will torment him, a fugitive haunted by guilt all the way to the grave, with no one to support him. The pure will be rescued from failure, but the perverse will suddenly fall into ruin. Work hard and you'll have all you desire, but chase a fantasy and you could end up with nothing. Life's blessings drench the honest and faithful person, but punishment rains down upon the greedy and dishonest. Giving favoritism to the rich and powerful is disgusting, and this is the type of judge who would betray a man for a bribe. A greedy man is in a race to get rich, but he forgets that he could lose what's most important and end up with nothing. If you correct someone with constructive criticism, in the end he will appreciate it more than flattery. A person who would reject his own parents and say, what's wrong with that, is as bad as a murderer. To make rash, hasty decisions shows that you are not trusting the Lord. But when you rely totally on God, you will still act carefully and prudently. Self-confident know-it-alls will prove to be fools, 
But when you lean on the wisdom from above, you will have a way to escape the troubles of your own making. You will never go without if you give to the poor, but if you're heartless, stingy, and selfish, you invite curses upon yourself. When wicked leaders rise to power, good people go into hiding. But when they fall from power, the godly take their place. Proverbs 29. Stubborn people who repeatedly refuse to accept correction will suddenly be broken and never recover. Everyone rejoices when the lovers of God flourish, but the people groan when the wicked rise to power. When you love wisdom, your father is overjoyed, but when you associate with prostitutes, you waste your wealth in exchange for disgrace. A godly leader who values justice is a great strength and example to the people, but the one who sells his influence for money tears down what is right. Flattery can often be used as a trap to hide ulterior motives and take advantage of you. The wicked always have a trap laid for others, but the lovers of God escape as they sing and shout in joyous triumph. God's righteous people will pour themselves out for the poor, but the ungodly make no attempt to understand or help the needy. Arrogant cynics love to pick fights, but the humble and wise love to pursue peace. There's no use arguing with a fool, for his ranting and raving prevents you from making a case and settling the argument in a calm way. Violent men hate those with integrity, but the lovers of God esteem those who are holy. You can recognize fools by the way they give full vent to their rage and let their words fly, but the wise bite their tongue and hold back all they could say. When leaders listen to false accusations, their associates become scoundrels. Poor people and their oppressors have only one thing in common. God made them both. The best insurance for a leader's longevity is to demonstrate justice for the poor. Experiencing many corrections and rebukes will make you wise, but if left to your own ways, you'll bring disgrace to your parents. When the wicked are in power, lawlessness abounds, but the patient lovers of God will one day watch in triumph as their stronghold topples. Correct your child and one day you'll find he has changed and will bring you great delight. When there's no clear prophetic vision, people quickly wander astray. But when you follow the revelation of the word, heaven's bliss fills your soul. A stubborn servant can't be corrected by words alone, for even if he understands, he pays no attention to you. There's only one kind of person who is worse than a fool, the impetuous one who speaks without thinking first. If you pamper your servants, don't be surprised when they expect to be treated as sons. The source of strife is found in an angry heart, for sin surrounds the life of a furious man. Lift yourself up with pride and you will soon be brought low, but a meek and humble spirit will add to your honor. You are your own worst enemy when you partner with a thief, for a curse of guilt will come upon you when you fail to report a crime. Fear and intimidation is a trap that holds you back, but when you place your confidence in the Lord, you will be seated in the high place. Everyone curries favor with leaders, but God is the judge, and justice comes from Him. The wicked hate those who live a godly life, but the righteous hate injustice wherever it's found. Proverbs 30 These are the collected sayings of the prophet Agur, Jacka's son, the amazing revelation he imparted to Ithiel and Ukal. God, I'm so weary and worn out. I feel more like a beast than a man. I was made in your image, but I lack understanding. I've yet to learn the wisdom that comes from the full and intimate knowledge of you, the Holy One. Who is it that travels back and forth from the heavenly realm to the earth? Who controls the wind as it blows and holds it in his fists? Who tucks the rain into the cloak of his clouds? Who stretches out the skyline from one vista to the other? What is his name and what is the name of his son? Who can tell me? Every promise from the faithful God is pure and proves to be true. He is a wraparound shield of protection for all his lovers who run to hide in him. Never add to his words or he will have to rebuke you and prove that you're a liar. God, there are two things I'm asking you for before I die, only two. Empty out my heart, everything that is false, every lie and every crooked thing. 
and give me neither undue poverty nor undue wealth, but rather feed my soul with the measure of prosperity that pleases you. May my satisfaction be found in you. Don't let me be so rich that I don't need you, or so poor that I have to resort to dishonesty just to make ends meet. Then my life will never detract from bringing glory to your name. Never defame a servant before his master, for you will be the guilty one, and a curse will come upon you. There is a generation rising that curses their fathers and speaks evil of their mothers. There is a generation rising that considers themselves to be pure in their own eyes, yet they are morally filthy, unwashed and unclean. There is a generation rising that is so filled with pride they think they are superior and look down on others. There is a generation rising that uses their words like swords to cut and slash those who are different. They would devour the poor, the needy, and the afflicted from off the face of the earth. There are three words to describe the greedy. Give me more. There are some things that are never satisfied. Forever craving more, they are unable to say that's enough. Here are four. The grave, yawning for another victim. The barren womb, ever wanting a child. Thirsty soil, ever longing for rain. And a raging fire, devouring its fuel. They're all insatiable. The eye that mocks his father and dishonors his elderly mother deserves to be plucked out by the ravens of the valley and fed to the young vultures. There are four marvelous mysteries that are too amazing to unravel. Who could fully explain them? The way an eagle flies in the sky, the way a snake glides on a boulder, the path of a ship as it passes through the sea, and the way a bridegroom falls in love with his bride. Here is the deceptive way of the adulterous woman. She takes what she wants and then says, I've done nothing wrong. There are four intolerable events that are simply unbearable to observe. When an unfaithful servant becomes a ruler, when a scoundrel comes into great wealth, when an unfaithful woman marries a good man, and when a mistress replaces a faithful wife. The earth has four creatures that are very small but very wise. The feeble ant has little strength, yet look how it diligently gathers its food in the summer to last throughout the winter. The delicate rock badger isn't all that strong, yet look how it makes a secure home nestled in the rocks. The locusts have no king to lead them, yet they cooperate as they move forward by bands. And the small lizard is easy to catch as it clings to the walls with his hands, yet it can be found inside a king's palace. There are four stately monarchs who are impressive to watch as they go forth. The lion, the king of the jungle, who is afraid of no one. The rooster strutting boldly among the hens. The male goat out in front leading the herd and a king leading his regal procession. If you've acted foolishly by drawing attention to yourself, or if you've thought about saying something stupid, you better shut your mouth, for such stupidity may give you a bloody nose. Stirring up an argument only leads to an angry confrontation. Proverbs 31. King Lemuel's royal words of wisdom. These are the inspired words my mother taught me. Listen, my dear son, son of my womb, you are the answer to my prayers, my son. So keep yourself sexually pure from the promiscuous, wayward woman. Don't waste the strength of your anointing on those who ruin kings. You'll live to regret it. For you are a king, Lemuel, and it's never fitting for a king to be drunk on wine or for rulers to crave alcohol. For when they drink, they forget justice and ignore the rights of those in need, those who depend on you for leadership. Strong drink is given to the terminally ill who are suffering at the brink of death. Wine is for those in depression in order to drown their sorrows. Let them drink and forget their poverty and misery. But you are to be a king who speaks up on behalf of the disenfranchised and pleads for the legal rights of the defenseless and those who are dying. Be a righteous king judging on behalf of the poor and interceding for those most in need. Who could ever find a wife like this one? She is a woman of strength and mighty valor. She's full of wealth and wisdom. The price paid for her was greater than many jewels. Her husband has entrusted his heart to her, for she brings him the rich spoils of victory. All throughout her life, she brings him what is good and not evil. She searches out continually to possess that which is pure and righteous. She delights in the work of her hands. She gives out revelation truth to feed others. She's like a trading ship bringing divine supplies from the merchant. 
Even in the night season, she arises and sets food on the table for hungry ones in her house and for others. She sets her heart upon a nation and takes it as her own, carrying it within her. She labors there to plant the living vines. She wraps herself in strength, might, and power in all her works. She tastes and experiences a better substance, and her shining light will not be extinguished, no matter how dark the night. She stretches out her hands to help the needy, and she lays hold of the wheels of government. She is known by her extravagant generosity to the poor, for she always reaches out her hands to those in need. She's not afraid of tribulation, for all her household is covered in the dual garments of righteousness and grace. Her clothing is beautifully knit together, a purple gown of exquisite linen. Her husband is famous and admired by all, sitting as the venerable judge of, of his people. Even her works of righteousness she does for the benefit of her enemies. Bold power and glorious majesty are wrapped around her as she laughs with joy over the latter days. Her teachings are filled with wisdom and kindness as loving instruction pours from her lips. She watches over the ways of her household and meets every need they have. Her sons and daughters arise in one accord to extol her virtues, and her husband arises to speak of her in glowing terms. There are many valiant and noble ones, but you have ascended above them all. Charm can be misleading, and beauty is vain, and so quickly fades. But this virtuous woman lives in the wonder, awe, and fear of the Lord. She will be praised throughout eternity. So go ahead and give her the credit that is due, for she has become a radiant woman, and all her loving works of righteousness deserve to be admired at the gateways of every city.